What's up, sons? It's Blinder on with Sonata Tech once again, and today we're going to talk about modding your RX 580 BIOS for Ethereum and getting the best hash rate for ET hash in particular. This includes coins such as Pearl, Ubique, Musicoin, and of course Ethereum. And we have two methods for you guys to check out. One's easy, one's super easy. And then I'll talk about another even more complicated method and give you guys some resources to search that out. So stick around. Welcome back. Without further ado, we're just gonna hop right on over to the system. So if you guys want to get the best hash rate and not flash your BIOS and you're running the XFX RX 580, any of the models pretty much, they do have a BIOS switch on them next to the power adapter. And if you head on over and flip that, it will take you from the 22 mega hash that you saw earlier in this series to a about 26. I'll show you guys right here. We have it currently enabled. And so if we scroll down, I'll just run this on Pearl real quick and we'll show you guys the 26 mega hash and how that works. It's as simple as flipping a button. This is the super easy method here. Alrighty, so as you guys can see, we have 26.452 mega hash a second. Now, if we want to improve this even more, we can modify the BIOS with a BIOS modification that I've already gotten for you guys, and we'll talk about that now. But first, we're gonna need a couple things. We're going to need Tech Power Ups ATI Flash, as well as Tech Power Ups GPU-Z. I will leave the links to both of these in the description. A quick search will find both of them. We're gonna start with GPU-Z. You will just go and download the standard version from the US server. I already have this installed, but if you want to install it, just run the executable and it will get going. Once we launch it, there's one thing we're gonna to wanna to do before we really get started. We're gonna to wanna to check our memory. The BIOS modification that I'm gonna be showing you guys is specifically for the Hynix memory, so do not use this BIOS modification for any other type, such as Micron. We'll cover Micron, etc., flashing in another video, and at the end of this, like I said, I'll talk about a more complicated method where you could potentially change the timings for any of the cards you wish. So there you go on that. Now we know that we can use the particular BIOS modification that I have for you guys to download, and now we're just gonna grab ATI flash, you'll click download and grab it from the US server. The next step you're gonna to wanna to do is extract it to a folder. I used one on the desktop called ATI flash to extract, right click, go to 7-zip and say extract here. So now we have all of the files we'll need as far as ATI win flash, ATI flash.exe, etc. Alrighty, so the last thing we're gonna to need to grab is going to be the BIOS ROM that we're going to be flashing to. I've placed it on the Son of a Tech website, and if you click it in the description below, it'll immediately download the file to your browser, and you'll just wanna show in folder, and then copy this and paste it into your ATI Flash directory. Right click, 7-zip, and extract here. I will say yes to all just because we already have it here. Now I did rename it to be more clear. This is the RX 580 4XFX Hynix 29 Mega Hash. Keep in mind that if you're looking at any other ROMs on the internet or if you have a Sapphire card, there are some available. You're just gonna have to do a little bit of digging. If you do try to flash, for example, an XFX BIOS onto a Sapphire BIOS, it will work, but you're gonna have to use some command prompts with ATI Flash to unlock the ROMs and kind of get everything sorted. You'll get a mismatch ID error otherwise. But for us, this is all we're gonna need to do if you're following along with this exact GPU. So the next thing we want to do is back up our current BIOS by opening GPU-Z, and you'll see a little button that if you highlight over it will say Save BIOS. We want to export this BIOS so that if something goes wrong, we have something to revert back to. So we're just gonna save the file and hop into our desktop and the ATI flash, and I am just going to call it the stock XFX RX 582 because this would be on the this ROM 
On the top here is my stock one from the stock profile, and this one will be my second one. So this will, I'll just denote it with a two so I know this is the stock one for this particular ROM. So now that we have that all sorted, we can get to flashing. The best way to do this is actually not by using the ATI win flash, but by using a command prompt. So we're gonna search for command prompt and run it as administrator. The next thing we're going to need to do is head on over and change directory to the directory we have unzipped ATI flash to. We can do that with a simple change directory command, which is CD, and then we can copy from the Windows Explorer window the directory and paste it into command prompt with a right click and press enter. Now we can run a directory command just to verify we are in the right folder and you can see here that we have the ATI flash.exe that we are looking for. This is the directory you're looking for. Alrighty so for a quick reference I've put these commands or the ATI flash commands in a notepad for you to see and they will also be in the description below. All right, so before I do this, I will make a disclaimer. I'm not responsible for anything that may or may not happen to your GPU at this point in the video. Be sure to make sure that you are ready to switch back between your BIOSes so you can go ahead and flash back if you need to. If you have a GPU with only a single ROM on it and no BIOS switch, make sure that you have a secondary GPU to boot into Windows to be able to flash the one that was uh, incorrect. And we'll go over how to do that, basically a BIOS recovery video in another video. Alrighty, so now we're ready to run the commands. We're going to first run uh, ATI flash unlock ROM. So you can just copy it from the description and paste it into your command prompt with a right click and press enter. At this point, you should get a notification that says ROM unlock. And now we are finally ready to flash the BIOS. So basically you're going to run this command and then replace the name with the .rom with whatever the name of the ROM is. Some people like to rename them BIOS.rom just to make it easy, etc. But for us for now, we're going to copy this command and once again right click in our command prompt and press enter. At this point, the BIOS will begin to flash itself. So once complete, you will get a prompt that says restart system to complete vBIOS update. The quickest way in command prompt is just to run a shutdown slash R command and we will reboot. Alrighty, now that we are back into Windows, let's go ahead and, and check our hash rate once again. So I'm gonna run Claymore Dual Miner. And as you guys can see, our hash rate is now a whopping 29.5 mega hash a second as opposed to the 26 with just the BIOS switching. So flashing the BIOS is still very beneficial for the RX 580s and 480s and there is a plethora of options out there. Just be very careful and make sure you pick the right manufacturer as well as the correct memory. The memory being more important than the manufacturer. You can get away with flashing a Sapphire BIOS onto an XFX. Here and there is just dependent sometimes. So now let's go ahead and talk about how people build these out for you so you guys get a better understanding. There's an application and various applications to do this with. The one I've been using most recently is srbpolaris.exe. You can download this and then right click to extract and then run it right away. Once you open it up, there will actually be nothing populated and you'll have to click open BIOS. Alrighty, so to populate this, you're gonna need to open your BIOS. Once again, you're just gonna wanna get into tech power up GPU Z and use the save BIOS button to save the BIOS like we did earlier and now you'll have a BIOS that you can open up so for example we'll open up the XFX RX 580 GTX 2 and now we can go through memory timings and we can go through frequencies voltages power tune fan other if somebody is asking you for example if, if you are on a 1500 timing you can come in here and find all of that out you can go into your strap editor and pull in one of the straps for example and analyze it and then you can modify it with all of these settings i will leave some links in the description below on 
on what exactly you're looking for. I don't want to go into it in detail in this video, maybe in a later video. If it's something you're interested in, let me know in the comment section below. For now, I'm going to refer you over to another great mining YouTuber, Buried One. So he already has a video on all of this and that will help you also with other memory manufacturers, etc. So there you go, guys. There's the quick and dirty for how to take your XFX RX 580 from 22 mega hash to 29 mega hash without even doing any overclocking. You can get a little bit more performance to power ratio if you go ahead and hop into either Afterburner, which does work with the Polaris cards now, or into AMD's own overclocking utility Wattman. And in there, what you're gonna wanna do is keep turning down the power until the card stops working. And then you're gonna wanna keep testing to make sure it stays on for an extended period of time. I recommend everybody do this in a separate kind of environment than just copying and pasting somebody else's settings. And I also recommend that if you're having some issues with the particular BIOS that you've downloaded, from me and you're getting some crashes to go ahead and look into modifying those timings for your card in particular. This is just the nature of the game. If you want the best performance, you're going to have to put in more work. And that's kind of the moral of the story at this point. I will go over overclocking and kind of what you're looking for when overclocking it. And once again, I want to clarify that this modification is only for ET hash, the dagger hash, it's not for anything like Monero, etc and that actually has some separate BIOS modifications that you should be making, etc. And we'll go over those in a later video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next Tuesday.